today uh, it's my great pleasure to be interviewing uh, Lord Stephen Green, ex-chairman, chief executive of HSBC, also former government trade minister for the UK government and chairman of the Natural History Museum in London. Stephen, good to have you here. Yes. Over your long and distinguished career, you, you must have had a number of leaders that inspired you and pointed you in the right direction. Um, can you give us some insight into perhaps some of those people and what they did that made them so inspiring for you? Well, I can think of one person who was the uh, famous chairman of HSBC, Willie Purvis, uh, mm -hmm. who was, a, who was an, in a sense, a natural-born leader. He was a very charismatic figure. Um, he inspired confidence. Um, he had an eye for uh, 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 people who were going to make a mm -hmm. serious commitment and had ability, and, uh, uh, and he ran HSBC at a, at a point in time when it was uh, on the cusp of becoming, when he, he made it become a global bank because he, he led the acquisition of Midland mm. Bank which transformed HSBC from being an East Asian, yeah. uh, very strong East mm -hmm. Asian franchise into a more global franchise and the head office moved from Hong Kong to yeah. London and so on. So he, he's clearly an example of the point. Um, I can think of others too. I, I have a great privilege and honour of uh, being asked to be trade minister in the, mm -hmm. in the last government, the coalition government, mm -hmm. and therefore working closely with some uh, uh, significant political mm -hmm. leaders, David Cameron um, uh, and, and the team then, and I was inspired in many ways by the way in which very able, um, uh, energetic, charismatic people um, could could lead in in a in an environment, and we'll perhaps talk about mm -hmm. this, uh, which is different and more complex than leading in the commercial sphere. Um, uh, we should talk a bit about that, um, and and achieve change and get things mm -hmm. done. Uh, well, that, that, that that's interesting. Um, we, we can cover that later because. Uh, I think the, the inspiration that you get from having a commercial objective is one thing, but, but when you're in government then um, linked to some work I, I've done in UAE, actually the vision of building a nation or improving your own country is to some degree even more inspiring. Uh, but if when you look back at your career and, and you think about the people that, that have inspired you, how much of that do you generally see in organisations now, or do you think we have a shortage of inspiring leadership? I, I do think there are different sorts of inspiring <coughs> leadership, uh, and the, 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 the very strong, very public, uh, out, out in the front charismatic mm -hmm. figure is one kind, mm. but you can be equally inspired, I think, by people who lead more as servant leaders, to mm -hmm. use a phrase that gets yes. used in different sorts of contexts, um, where, there's a, where there's a dedicated, upright humility mm -hmm. and, uh, and ability about them. Um, so I think there are different kinds of leadership for different circumstances. Um, you know, cometh the hour, cometh, mm -hmm. you say cometh the hour, cometh the man, I should say yep. cometh the hour, cometh the, the person. person yes. um, uh, and there is a sense in which that's true. Mm. Different, different circumstances call for different sorts of leadership. I mean, to be, make the obvious point, mm -hmm. it's one thing to be a leader in, 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 in the military, in, in, mm. in, uh, in the front line. It's quite another thing to be the leader who is de fact, in practice, mm -hmm. chairing a group of people who are really a partnership. So you know, let's say a legal partnership yeah, yeah. Um, uh, or in academic contexts, or as mm -hmm. I rather like cheekily to remind people that sometimes investment banks are really a form of partnership. You're kind of corralling a group of people uh, who each think they've got their own particular paleo which is theirs do, yes. and and uh, and and the leadership that is consensus building mm. uh, and, and and chairing the formation of a consensus and, and yet at the same time has a sense of the direction of travel is a different sort of leadership mm. but do you, do you think that underpinning all of those types of leadership there are consistent things that leaders do that get people on board? I think it's probably true that all good or great leaders have mm. a sense of the importance of the symbolic, mm. uh, the symbolic action. Yes. Um, uh, I think they all, all at their best have a sense that leadership isn't just vested in them and their particular mm. positions mm. but is actually a responsibility shared throughout the organism or organisation. Mm -hmm. 
Um, uh, it was that famous NASA story, the, 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 the cleaner who says to President Kennedy, uh, when, when Kennedy when President Kennedy asks what his job is, he says, I'm helping to put a man on the moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and, and it's a bit of a cliche, but it actually it speaks to an important truth, mm. uh, which is um, that leadership is vested all through the organization. And one thing I do remember saying when I was at HSBC mm. is that anybody on the organization chart, wherever it is, and however many people they may have reporting to them on the organization mm -hmm. chart, have a leadership responsibility in that they can affect by what they do, for good or for ill, um, both other people within the organization and, of course, the external mm -hmm. environment, the client, uh, and, the, uh, and the and the public sphere in which the bank operated. I, I, I think that's absolutely uh, absolutely right, and, and, and maybe underpinning that is just the, the most simple concept, which I think is is perhaps trust. The fact that that you well, look up yeah. and you trust, yes, yes, because there, there's yeah. figures that, that that would suggest that from various surveys that when asked, only 30-ish percent of employees totally trust the senior management of their organizations, mm. which is a worrying figure. Yes, yes, yes it is. Um, I mean, trust, you're right to focus on the word. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's a concept that's hard to define. Indeed. Um, yeah. But you know it when it's not there, that's for sure. <laughs> yes, and, 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 and I think it, it, it's the moment that that trust breaks down that, that things get complicated. But linked to, to, to your roles, uh, I suppose, both at, at HSBC and as a trade minister, one of the interesting aspects, I think, of leadership is the, the global perspective and the cultural perspective about what leadership is. Would, would you say that, that there are consistent things that leaders have to do no matter where they are in the world, but equally, the application of some of those things varies depending whether you're in Hong Kong or Australia, uh, India or U UK. I think it's a very interesting question. Yes, there are some consistent things: and, mm. you know, honesty, integrity, mm -hmm. um, being willing to willing to uh, uh, do what you say and not merely kind of uh, expect other people to do it without you being prepared yeah, to be there yourself. Absolutely. All those kinds of things, I mm. think, are consistent everywhere. Um, the uh, it is true that any uh, international organization mm -hmm. operates in many different cultures, and again, HSBC obviously sure. had, well, when I was there, I think 80, 80, 80 some different uh, mm -hmm. countries in which there was a physical operating presence, and many more than that where it did business. And, um, uh, and actually, as trade minister, I found myself in you know, 56 countries over three years. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, and you can't but be aware of the, the different cultural environments, different, different stages of development, mm -hmm. actually. You go all the way from um, working in countries that have uh, uh, standards of living that are kind of leading mm -hmm. edge, you know, Singapore, for example, through to very poor countries at much earlier stages of development with yeah. monumental challenges as they Indeed. try to try to take take society forwards, uh, and so of course there are different cultural challenges. Um, quite apart from the fact that different cultures with their different histories tend to think differently about the way in which relationships work. Yeah. You have to be careful about all of that. Uh, you, you have to, uh, I think, be empathetic. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to be actually excited and, en and enriched by the cultural variety. One of the most exciting things about both those jobs mm -hmm. was the way in which uh, they brought you into contact with people from every imaginable cultural environment across the, across the planet. Um, so it's enriching. Um, uh, you have to be sensitive, you mm -hmm. have to be careful, uh, you have to not end up thinking that everything is relative and nothing ultimately matters. Yeah, and, 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 but, but linked to that, one of the things I, I, I've noticed sometimes is, is that perhaps that we in the West always have the assumption that the way we do it is always right. And, and the comment could be made that democracy within the Western sense and the Western view of business, democracy and all of that isn't necessarily the most appropriate view for some of the developing countries you're talking about. Um, you know, somebody, somebody quite senior in China made uh, the comment to me once that effectively said, look, at this point in time, you could say that actually stability for our country is more important than democracy. Well, that's a large question. No, no, I know it's an extremely <laughs> it large question. It takes well beyond yes, uh, kind of leadership in particular organisations. Yes. Um, 
Yeah, it's obviously true that China is not an individualistic democracy, in, just in, in, in constitutional but, but terms. But that feeds into the way people um, think, that you made the comment. Uh, That's the way people <coughs> think in organisations. It's more about, I have to subsume myself to the organisation's desire. Well, I, 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 more but, but than I would Western. add, in the case yeah. of China, it may not be an individualistic democracy, and I don't know whether it will ever become one. Um, uh, but without a discussion of the values implied sure. in that, uh, what is clearly the case is that China is a very pluralistic society mm -hmm. uh, and becomes ever more so in the digital world. I mean, there's a vibrant blogosphere in China. Mm -hmm. um, it's absolutely not the case that this is a highly homogenous, uh, as it were, automated society where you, some leader presses the button and everybody else does exactly what they're told. That's not what China's like. No, as, uh, as we have seen uh, as, from events. Uh, as, uh, as, we all, as, as I think anybody, anybody who's... Yes. Uh, visited or done sure. business their nose um, uh, and therefore I don't think it's as different as all that in terms of what it means for the way you deal with people uh, in an organization when you're trying to get things done um, but you do have to be careful um, uh, to be empathetic and sensitive to different cultural environments um, the West itself of course you say the West the yeah, West yeah. Is, itself is not homogenous no, uh, the West itself has evolved over history mm -hmm. um, it has uh, values bo both in, in, in a European context uh, and we the British are part of the, uh, of the European context mm -hmm. as far as I'm concerned as Indeed. an aside um, <laughs> uh, uh, both in the European and in the and in a North American context there are sets of values that we aspire to in my view rightly human mm -hmm. rights uh, uh, democratic rights. Um, a, we, we better not kid ourselves about how good we are at living up to those values, and B, be careful and sensitive about how we um, uh, interact with other parts of the world where current cultural norms may not be identical, let's put it And And, and therefore, from the, the leader's perspective within the global organisation, as you say, that's something they need to be sensitive to. Of course, of course. I, I think sensitivity, empathy, um, ability to put yourself in to the position of the other person is clearly an element in successful, actually, modern life, but, but specifically leadership, of course. And, 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 maybe and, I, and I guess back to oh. my earlier point, how leadership is not just vested in, in a top management or in a board. It is spread through the organisation. There is, there is some important sense in which everybody is a leader. Yeah. Um, what I mean by that is partly this whole question of empathising with other people, being able to put yourself in the other person's shoes um, and seeing what the world looks like from their vantage point um, is just a more effective way of dealing with people. It's a more effective way of getting things done. It's mm -hmm. a, a perhaps almost the key element in leadership. And, and, and what is interesting though, is that so some statistics that, that quite clearly show where the balance of power is in, in what is important in leadership is, is for example, that uh, an employee's decision to give high performance is roughly 60-40 rational emotional which confuses most organisations because they like the rational bit, but the fact that there's 40% emotional is very worrying, particularly yeah. to figures-based people, and how do we deal with that? Yeah. But then what is more powerful is that actually 80% roughly of that emotional element is down to the line manager. It's nothing to do with the chief executive. It yeah. goes to that point about yeah, people course. join the organizations the, the and leave bosses. The person who you are actually regularly in contact with. Yes, yes. and it's, it, yeah. it's that, it, it's that yeah. empathy thing. Yeah. So, so to your point, the, the concept of leadership, I think, is it's not just the people in the boardroom. It's everybody Quite. who's a leader Quite so. who's responsible for people. Ex exactly so. And, yeah. and, and you as chief executive yeah. and the board can say the best things and be the most inspiring people. But if you happen to be working for mm. a boss who is not competent and you don't mm. trust, mm. Mm. you're not going to hang around. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, helping a, a sense of the right values, mm -hmm. the, the strategy, the business direction. Mm -hmm. um, after all, businesses are not charities. They have to earn their way in life. Um, so they need a credible, viable, sustainable business strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, they need a culture um, and, 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 and making sure that's infused throughout the organization is both critical and a job that's never complete. Yeah. And what, one of the things that, that, that is interesting also is that given the way the world is, the speed of the, which it's moving, the need to innovate, the need to change, one, I think it's interesting the concept of, of how entrepreneurial people can be within a corporate environment. 
And, and one of the things I've, I've done in the past is to try and help, um, this was within UBS, develop entrepreneurial thinking amongst people who are essentially corporate beasts mm. so they can look out and they can see what the customer wants mm. and they can innovate and they can focus in on it. Yeah. Do you think that maybe what we need is within larger organizations more of that entrepreneurial thinking? Because wasn't that linked to what you were trying to encourage in, in your trade minister role? Uh, yeah. Well, th there's some differences. Uh, Indeed, yes. The, the, I mean, the trade minister role, we were certainly trying to encourage more British businesses to get out and export. Mm -hmm. and this, this country has a strategic problem uh, for many decades now. It has had a weak trade position. Yep. We have a low market share. Uh, 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 we've got to pay our way in the world. We need to get more companies into the export markets. And that mm -hmm. does indeed involve helping and encouraging and supporting people to be, if you will, more entrepreneurial, to take a few risks. Um, and uh, a big part of uh, what I spent three years doing was, right. was trying to get the conditions right and, and encouraging people, uh, if you will, the kind of cultural sense that there's a world that's your oyster, that, yep. get out and explore it. Yes. Um, uh, 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 because that's in the interests of the British economy very strongly. I mean, there's this very compelling evidence that mm -hmm. companies that export become uh, uh, materially more productive as they do so. Uh, they make more money, they grow faster, they last longer, they create more jobs. So um, it's a compelling case. Um, and that's about partly about cultural change. It was about other things too, making mm -hmm. sure uh, the appropriate level of official financial support, um, trade promotion services provided through official sources, both here and around the world, um, making sure that British business groups, chambers of commerce around the world were there to be supportive to incoming um, British businesses mm -hmm. trying to find their foothold in a new market, etc., etc. So that's about cultural change. Um, and there's a lot of jawboning that goes with that. Mm -hmm. um, in the context of a, and you do indeed want to help people become more entrepreneurial, in the context of a big corporation, mm -hmm. HSBC was certainly that, sure. the time that I was there, employed around 300,000 people, mm -hmm. a little less now, but around 300,000 when I was there. Um, at one level, you certainly want people to be to show initiative, be creative, but of course there are other issues, Indeed. as HSBC discovered. Um, you, you want to make sure that people are also working within the framework of the policies um, that the company has set uh, that have to do with the way in which business is done. So uh, I, I, I therefore am a bit careful about the word entrepreneurial no, no, for I, obvious well, reasons. I, I, I think uh, you, you, your comments are absolutely right in that the, <laughs> when, the, when the concept of entrepreneurial leadership was first mentioned to the chief risk officer, there was an interesting response, um, a, a, as you can imagine, and it is that balance but but people some people have said that since the financial crisis the the desire to control risk has meant that organizations have become less entrepreneurial than perhaps they need to well be. i think it's often said and i'm no longer in the banking no. industry i haven't been for five years but it's often said that the pendulum has now swung so far that uh that actually banks are impeded from or, or constrained in their core function of you yes. know, lending to small businesses doing ordinary business. Yeah. Uh, and and it, uh, I don't know whether that's fair or not. Um, the, the, the pendulum certainly has swung and isn't going to go back. Uh, I, I, the experience of the financial crisis in 08, 09 was mm -hmm. such that the public domain anywhere in the world is not going to uh, tolerate the kind of light touch regulatory yeah, environment sure. that, that prevailed before that. Uh, so there is a new norm um, and banks will have to come to terms with that and adjust to it and you can see the big banks uh, uh, doing so. Um, that's I think a different point. I, I think it's perfectly reasonable for society to say we got the balance between um, between um, expansionism and, 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 and creativity, uh, including some socially useless, useless creation, creative Indeed. ideas, uh, to use uh, the famous phrase that was coined by Adair Turner, actually. Um, the, uh, uh, there was clearly, nobody wants to go back to that. Mm. Um, and so there are clearly specific challenges for the banking industry. More generally, um, if you're in a large corporation, fostering the entrepreneurialism, the initiative, the creativity yeah. within the appropriate context of the business policy is yes, is one of the enduring challenges. And there are no magic wands for getting right that, getting, uh, but, getting that but, right. 
if, if, if we go back to a famous strapline about global yet local, that is inevitably the, the, the challenge that any global organization has, which is the maintenance of, to some level, a global level of consistency, but giving sufficient freedom right. to meet Correct. local needs. Exactly so. And, and, and at, that, at that level, we can both formulate what the objective is, because uh, getting that right on a daily basis in every place or, you know, all of the time is, is it's like painting the fourth bridge. You go on to <laughs> go on working at it. <laughs> and, and, and I think it's that, it's that balancing act, be, be, because as, as both of us know, there is that pendulum that, that cyclically swings backwards and forwards in a number of areas. For example, centralization or autonomy. Correct. Yeah, absolutely. At lower levels. absolutely. That's a classic dilemma, and there is no single right no. answer. Um, it, it's clearly not at I. Wherever the answer it's is, it isn't, it isn't at either of the extremes, uh, and it's also probably not valid at all times in all places. There will be times in the experience of an organisation when you've got to centralise to address certain issues. Mm -hmm. There are times when you've got to decentralise in order to be effective. And it's, it's getting that balance right. But, but you, what is interesting is that you, you alluded to... You can even see two different organisations in the same market going in opposite directions like that at roughly simultaneously. I, 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 absolutely. If, you, if you're supplying different services to different segments of the market, then the logic... Well, or just, ca just coming out of specific corporate experiences yes. you know if you if you have a, a problem of a, of a control crisis you will react one way mm -hmm. um, and, and and that may mean that you are busy centralizing and uh, giving more power to the risk function mm -hmm. just at the very time when another company that hasn't got that recent history is is um, kind of uh, uh, opening the spigots a bit more yeah yeah <laughs> uh, you you were sort of we've we talked about large organizations but you alluded to SME small small and medium sized and, and I think that's interesting because you know, the, the the number of people employed by SMEs is greater. Oh, absolutely. You know, what Abs is it, absolutely. 70, 80 yeah. percent are actually employed by SMEs. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and, and I think um, that market is really interesting because they are the people who are the powerhouse. And, and, and I had a I, I was in Brussels with Daniel Kaeja, the um, EU director general yep. for industry. And, and, and his comment was, my job is not to keep SMEs happy. My job is to make SMEs into larger organizations because that produces economic growth. So what are your thoughts about the, that, that sector and how important that is and, and the leadership in that sector? I, I think it's a profoundly important question, mm -hmm. the leadership in, in the SME world. You've said it, SMEs contribute uh, most of the employment opportunities in, in, in any economy, mm. and certainly, certainly in British yeah. economy. Um, uh, they are critical to uh, the export initiative that I was talking about. Um, they are not homogenous. Um, uh, SMEs s uh, spread across a wide range of sectors, and they're completely different sorts of companies. Mm -hmm. You can go all the way from very high-tech startups, mm -hmm. which are you know SMEs, but but they're utterly different from an SME in a traditional manufacturing sure. sector, um, making the proverbial widgets, and mm -hmm. and, uh, and then the agricultural SMEs, uh, uh, the, the, the creative industries, all sorts mm -hmm. of different kinds of. Um, activity that small groups of people band together to do. You've got some that are new, the, the startup world, you've got the family business that's two or three generations old, uh, you've, got, uh, uh, you've got them spread around the country, um, and you, and again, I'm in this case speaking out of my own experience of mm -hmm. being trade minister, because apart from going around the world and visiting 56 countries over three years, I also made it my business to go around this country mm -hmm. and visit every region of the country. There are 12 administrative regions of the right. UK, uh, nine in England and then one each for Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland. Um, and I made it my business to be in each one of those twice a year. Right. Um, and, and, I, and I did that mm -hmm. over, over the three years. There's 24 trips around this country. Um, and you would meet small businesses of all shapes and sizes, every sector, every stage of life, if you will, from the family uh, older family business to the new, newish, very newest startups, um, and some who were, to use the phrase, born global from the moment they started, particularly the ones in the digital world, the online world, mm -hmm. trading internationally from the word go. Right. Others who kind of discovered this later on, and, and, and there were great stories of, of marvelous creativity and energy in the most surprising quarters, um, and, and the leadership that goes with that, and, and it's quite hard to generalize. The, mm. 
it, uh, I have one wonderful story, if I may, sure, uh, of a company which uh, I, I, I was asked to visit them. They mm -hmm. were in Walsall, and I was asked to visit them in order to open a new facility. The, the, this is a company that made cupcakes, okay. not high tech, <laughs> <laughs> um, handmade cupcakes. Yeah. Uh, they're making ten thousand of them, I think, a day. Mm -hmm. So the hand making was quite quite uh, was was in the context of a fair mm -hmm. amount of uh, automation, right. um, obviously. Um, the company had been established by a, uh, uh, somebody who'd come over from India in the 1960s, right. um, and he was uh, still, uh, still, st still alive, but now uh, mm -hmm. not, not, not actively involved in the business. Uh, his two sons were running the company, and right. one is the, effectively the operations manager, and one was effectively the marketing and sales. Mm -hmm. And they were mm -hmm. just in terms of personality, they, they absolutely fitted the, 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 right. the, the mold perfectly. Um, and then the son of the marketing manager, who'd been to business school, says to dad one day, do you know, we ought to look at exporting. And so he and his dad had got on a plane and they'd flown down to Lisbon. And instead of doing the sites of Lisbon, they'd gone around the cake shops of Lisbon, right. looked at the product, looked at the way they're made, the way they're sold, and did themselves a little business strategy and started exporting. And at the point when I uh, was asked to open their extra facility, mm -hmm. and, and I was asked to do that because their business had grown. They were also selling to the likes of Asda and Sainsbury. Right. Um, uh, they were exporting into 10 European countries, and wow. they were looking at taking Brazil on next. And, 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 and this is all, um, yeah, uh, obviously, the old man who'd founded the company, the, t the two brothers who actually run it, and this son who was clearly getting involved, um, had somewhere between them made this decision to go international. Um, where does that leadership come from? It's a little bit in the in the kind of family genes, I suspect. Well, I, I, yes, <laughs> I, 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 I think I think you're absolutely right. But what is interesting, I, I think, is how you can actually utilise that SME entrepreneurial dynamic within a larger organisation to make the larger well, organisation yeah. yeah. even better than yeah. it is. Yeah. But 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 certainly, um, and I think would would you agree that that to some from some perspective, the, the level of entrepreneurialism is actually culturally linked as well. In in, in terms yes, of yes, I think it is. I I, I, I think it is. I, I think you know I had I had a trip to India, and, and my my abiding memory of that that trip to India was um, a little old lady of about eighty sitting next to the road outside Calcutta with a box with three cauliflowers on it, and I just thought that is the ultimate entrepreneur. Um, yeah. a, and maybe driven by necessity, of course. Yes, of course. So this is but a complicated. Yeah, but, but, but complicated in terms story. of natural entrepreneurialism, yeah. Yeah. talking to groups of people I in Asia and India, if you ask a group of sort of corporate leaders who's had experience of being an entrepreneur or a family business, eighty percent of hands go up, mm. and they get the being mm. entrepreneurial. Mm. Mm. With Western audiences, it's not so many. No, it's not, I mean, I haven't. I've, no, I've never been in a small family business or, 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 mm -hmm. or created my own business. Um, I was a, most of my career in a large corporate. Uh, and my uh, direct encounter with small businesses obviously came through the bank, yeah. um, but really came in a, in a very inspiring way through this period of three years as trade minister. And, uh, and, and you meet wonderful examples right. like the one I quoted. There is also the other side, you, you, to your point about culture, I, I, I th it, and this is hard to pin down and hard mm -hmm. to talk about, um, but, but I think there is evidence too of people in their comfort zone, people yeah. not taking the, the risks. I mean, I, I, I don't want to get into the details because it's potentially invidious, but you know, I've met examples um, uh, of the mm -hmm. other kind of situation from the one I've just described, the cupcake yeah, sure. maker. The, the, the kind of person who you felt was coasting. I think that's right, and I think there's generational differences within family businesses about how first generation that built the business view it and how second generation that had given the business sometimes view it as uh, well. And then there's a classic, I mean, a well-established uh, uh, challenge of handing on a, yes, on a private family business yeah. from one generation to the next. That's yeah. a classic, uh, which sometimes goes brilliantly and, and sometimes <laughs> famously goes yes, catastrophically uh, wrong. Catastrophically uh, wrong with fireworks yeah. and all the rest. Of it. And, 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 and sort of talking about that leadership side of it, uh, from if there is a, a young developing leader listening to us talking, what would be a couple of pieces of advice you would give to that individual that you think would hold them in good stead going forward as a leader, just to make them more successful? In the SME world or in the big corporate world? In the big, world? In the big corporate in the big world, corporate in, world. I think. 
I, I, I think go on. I, I was fortunate that, mm -hmm. um, though I'm not a natural entrepreneur, actually, if I'm honest with myself, mm -hmm. um, that, that people kept on giving me another challenge. Every time I got to the point where I'm beginning to not feel stretched, mm -hmm. not feel so I'm getting developed by what I'm doing. Somebody came along and gave me something more to do. <laughs> and, and, I, and I guess I'd say if that doesn't happen, mm -hmm. then actually um, demand it. And if they mm -hmm. don't respond to your demand, then leave the place. Right. Uh, the one time I've ever actually uh, 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 left um, because I was dissatisfied with mm -hmm. what I was doing was my very first job, which was in the civil service a hundred years ago. Um, <laughs> uh, I came out of university, I, I took a gap year yep. um, during which I actually worked in an alcoholics hostel, an interesting oh, right. different experience of life, Indeed. Um, and then joined the civil service and I joined it because I wanted to work in development, mm -hmm. um, economic development, so yeah, I yeah. joined what was then called the Overseas Development sure. Administration, it is now DFID. Yeah. At that time, I don't think it was terribly well run. DFID is a very different animal now, so I don't want any <laughs> extrapolation, because <laughs> we're talking 40 years ago. Um, and, and, I, and there came a point where I was just not feeling stretched. My in-tray was empty by the middle mm -hmm. of the day, and I was getting bored, frankly. And yes. I then said, I, I, actually, my dad, I remember having lunch mm. with my dad and, and I was grumbling about this and he said, my boy, this is not a job of work, at which point a light bulb went on. <laughs> <laughs> and I kind of then, I, I about that afternoon, but fairly soon after that, kind of wrote out of the blue to McKinsey saying, here am I and this is what I've done, might you be interested in a conversation? Well, the rest um, is history. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but, uh, but I, so I think that not, not, not being, not being, re don't tolerate being kind of underused. I yeah. suppose is one way of putting it. Yeah, well, that's a good piece of advice. Um, linking to um, you, you, your sort of I mean, that's for the, that's for the big corporate world. And, and for the SME. You know, I mean, well, it's, it's harder for me to pontificate yeah. about SMEs. I haven't done it myself. Um, but uh, but watching other people and mm -hmm. having some of those close encounters that yeah, I described. I mean that, that that kind of verve and a sense that that all things are possible and uh, um, Opti an optimistic uh, belief. Uh, yes, an, an optimistic a can-do mentality and, yes. uh, and a willingness to do something you know, slightly different. You can get on the plane down to Lisbon or whatever, yes. it, whatever it might be. Stephen, thank you very much for a brilliant interview. <laughs> that was superb. Thank you. Thank you.